Hello there. A few more Valentine DIYs for this year. I can't wait to share them with you. I'm Whitney Lucas with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. Let's jump into our craft room. So our first project is going to use this a uh, couple Dollar Tree items here. We've got a little house that I got during the, I believe it was the beach themed goodies from last year, but you can get these house frames anywhere. And then also this uh, little metal envelope with a cute little Valentine's heart on it. She's super cute. And I'm um, gonna start by trying to get this off. Now this right here was a struggle. And I found out because they're actual like, I would say they're nails, but they're not even nails. They're just pieces of metal <laughs> holding in this little guy here. So it just wedged my um, razor blade here in between the two. It it came off with, you know, it, it wasn't without its own little, you know, issues, but I was able to fix it. I'm going to take these pieces of metal out. Now they're literally little 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 picks so be careful because you could scratch yourself and then i'm just going to sand it clean now i'm going to take that little piece of the roof too and i'm going to sand that now sanding the back to get the um, paper off but i started to sand the front and i like the distressed look that it gave so i decided to just keep sanding so it kind of got sand happy and as like first i was going to paint it and then i really like how it distressed slightly so you'll see when we put it back on it looks very very farmhouse very very happy and i like it so now with the little envelope here i just took the bow off the front of it and um, we're going to attach it to the front of the house but first for the house we're going to use this uh basically it says peel and stick removable i don't know it says removable but we'll see it was peel and stick wallpaper and i'm going to use a little remnant that i have left from one of my other projects and uh, this is also from dollar tree if you're not familiar with it uh so this has actually gone a couple couple of things a couple of a couple projects for me so this is pretty good so I'm gonna piece it together I'm gonna use half of it down here and then I'm gonna use a nail file because this has got a, a, a rougher grit on it than my current sanding blocks and I'm just gonna go in a downward motion away off of the off of the um, the project here and then here I'm just lining up the as best you can we're gonna cover this up so remember if you've got some that kind of if it doesn't match up for you it's okay because 100% most of the stuff that I make I cover up 90% of it so everything is supposed to complement each other and if you see here on this uh, left side I have a little bit here that didn't kind of mark you know didn't kind of match up so I'm showing you here that the roof will cover some of that and even on the other corner the other corner of that isn't covered with the wallpaper but again the little roof piece that we're going to glue back on covers it just fine you won't see it to look how pretty it is their farmhouse also take off your labels this left sticky on the back so i ended up putting a piece of like crafters tape to cover that and then that's pretty cute the way she is also if you can leave the roof piece on it's just going to be a little bit more tedious to cover the back if you choose to or you could paint it or use ribbon or anything else like that i really had um a hankering for some farmhouse wood stick stick on wallpaper and that made me happy and now we are going to attach our envelope now it's metal as you see here, um, you will burn yourself, which I did many times. <laughs> I used uh, whatever to hold it down. So we are now cooking with gas. So our main event. Now this right here, this was from a failed project a couple videos ago. You remember seeing that I ended up wrapping a frame with a bunch of twine. and had to cut it off because I lost my temper <laughs> or patience or whatever. But I'm going to use all those little pieces of twine. So we're going to stuff this envelope with this little you know twine i thought that it was fun you can stuff it with anything and it's also not spanish moss you could put spanish moss in there but what i want to do is i want to fill this little envelope here with all these little wooden hearts so we've got the actual metal envelope that we're gluing it to and then also we've got some you know the twine little pieces sticking out that you're using that as like another just like another avenue not an avenue but like another medium that you can use to glue things to and then i'm just layering the hearts now granted if you know me you've been here for a minute i don't like glitter it makes my eye twitch and i despise it because you will find it six years later in an odd place but for this for some reason it worked also the little heart on the back of the envelope you can still see it peeking through kind of sort of right now you can you won't by the end because we're going to add a little bit of greenery and we're going to add some a bow so um these little picks here off of these little um clothes pins here with the little lips on them that's the new i got these this year i thought they were super cute for valentine's day just little kisses and i'm going to take about three of them i'm warming them up on the with my heat gun and that gets the glue behind it warm just enough to where you're not going to break it the first you know the first one was a little bit of a, of a stickler but the other two came off okay just depends on how long you leave it in the heat 
be careful because you might burn it or your fingers but I got all these little lips off and we're all good to go on that front and I'm grabbing my ribbon now this is a, a very pretty little grow grain I'm gonna make a finger bow out of this pink uh, a gingham I think from it's gingham insert proper terminology here is it buffalo check is it gingham is it plaid I think it's gingham but it's a pink it's a it's a little powder pink gingham I got at Dollar Tree and we're going to just tie a little finger bow here I have a tutorial as you saw a little message there linked in my description below that slows it down and goes into detail it gets easier with practice but even as you see here I tied that twice I did a single one then I decided to do a double one and now this baby's breath here I got this off of Amazon just recently so that is also linked in my uh, there's a comment and in the, in the description below if you want to go to my Amazon shop and look for this exact same thing there's a link there you can take a peek at that and it also helps me out any uh, qualifying purchase you do with that link I get a small commission from so that helps me continue on maintaining my channel uh, but when, like I said if you want to take a peek at that it's a very decent price and it's it's plastic it's not like a silk or anything it's a plastic fake or faux baby's breath but I love it it, it gets the point across and it's really good for these small little things I just cut little pieces off here and tucked them in between and then cut some baby's breath off like right at the head and t and just glued that to the back of the top of that bow and I think it, it added just enough little greenery to make me happy at least because <laughs> you know I can't not have greens Although I think I've done a couple things. And also my last project has no greenery in it. But I wanted to put it in there so badly. <laughs> I was like, please, please. I had to walk away. What do you think? I think she turned out pretty. It's very cute. Very pink and, you know, traditional Valentine's. So let me know what you think. Now our second project starts out one way, ends in another but we have the premise so I'm starting with two canvases this first one's 8 by 10 the second one doesn't matter because we don't do what I originally thought it's a 5 by 7 now my original plan was to layer these two so for the first one here I'm gonna do a reverse canvas technique which is if you're familiar you take all these uh, staples out you take your canvas off and you end up gluing the frame to the top of the canvas but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a cute little treatment on the canvas itself so here I'm going to make you painfully watch me take every staple out <laughs> and then take the, the frame out. The frame itself was a decent one. It's hit or miss. And you see me put that there? That was my idea. We're going to layer these two. I'm going to leave that other frame, which it would work, but we would have to do different sizing. But for this project, it ended up looking different. And we can skip some steps and I'll let you know along the way. Now I'm taping it down because I'm going to use a stencil. So I don't want my uh, canvas to move on me now this is a new stencil that I just got from essential stencil it's the XO pack it's a three pack you get fairly large X a very large O and then I mainly bought it for this piece right here the little XOXO pattern I thought it was so cute and I like the font on it too so here I'm lining it up to show you that's where we are going to want to center the stencil so I can make sure that I get all the cute little kisses and hugs all over and I'm just taking the only red paint I had um, that wasn't acrylic it was some waverly red paint that I got so if you see here I'm going fairly slow in the beginning and I'm putting very very little paint on this stencil brush once you get an, uh, the hang of it you'll start to see just how much then I just literally accidentally shoved the paint uh, shoved the brush right in the middle of the paint there and so I got a little bit braver but if you see with my left hand between my middle and index finger I'm holding the stencil down on top of it being taped down so that it doesn't shift on me I'm holding the stencil down in the area that I'm actually stenciling on and then you'll start to see how much you can actually load with the brushes you can either do very little or, or at a time but I love these reveals look at that I love them I, I've been very lucky and then also just real fast I clean all my stencils I want to show you how easy it is you can put a paper towel this right underneath here is an older it's a they're puppy pads but I use them to paint and stain on top of for my crafts so just put something beneath it and then this is a baby wipe so you can either use a wet washcloth a wet paper towel um, some Windex and a paper towel or newspaper however you do your cleaning or you could possibly even just rub this in the sink if you want to put them in the sink but this is how I clean all mine so yes it does come through on the on the back so you're just gonna wipe it off on the both sides and then look she's all clean it's like a new and for your next project what you use it for you don't have to worry about any other bleed through of any other colors just wanted to show you that cute little short little how fast it is just to keep it neat and tidy 
Now, I'm going to take this little color your own ornament. It's a heart I got at Dollar Tree, and we're going to center it in our smaller five by seven frame. Now remember, this turns out differently. What I tried was I outlined it here thinking I could see through the canvas. You can't see through it. So I tried to use a stylus and maybe do an embossing thing so I could see the shape. That didn't work either. So put, just put the wood ornament on top and, and traced it with a pencil. And then I slowly realized here after I got my button hoard out, it's going to be white on the back of it. So I got the red paint back out and I just painted the heart in so that it has a red background because obviously, as you see here with my button hoards, I'm going to just add a bunch of pink and red buttons all over. So we're going to have little button hearts. It's a pretty little, just a pretty little medium for a little bit of country, a little bit of farmhouse, a little bit of happiness, just a little happiness in my heart. So now I've got it painted and I'm going to grab all kinds of buttons, various, various buttons took me a while to dig through them but again I have this thing where I love to stick my fingers in buttons I love buttons I don't know why I like to look at them in buckets and in I just bins I love buttons I just like I don't know what it is I like them I don't know I think half the time when you find out that you really really like something you have no idea or or way to describe why you like it you just do that's me in buttons because <laughs> it's not like I have a bunch of buttons in my decor but I have a bunch of buttons in my hoard <laughs> and I like buttons. Is there anything else? Yup. Time to share said secret with uh, comments below, you know, so that you will make me feel less odd. Do you like buttons? I love buttons. I should probably use more of them since I consider that every time I see them, I buy them. So I need to use more buttons. So as you can see, I'm just picking them out and I'm, I'm filling it up as fast as I can. This is sped up about six or eight times I don't know and I'm just trying to find these buttons here now <laughs> I'm using these tweezers as you see here and uh, at one point because these are like a tension tweezer here you can see I'm layering the buttons on top of each other and this is real time this is how slow it went but it was also fun so remember if you're doing something and it's taking you a while as long as you're having fun then it don't matter so again this is a good time this is a good way to pass the time I'll tell you that because when I got done I was like oh it's dark outside like I was in, in the casino or something. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> now, we're going to go back to our canvas and I'm going to just glue down the frame. The frame itself, I am not going to paint or, I mean, I sanded it a little bit just to get it smooth, but these frames, I got lucky on these ones. Um, and I'm just taking a very sharp blade and cutting the canvas off around the sides. It's very easy to do that because we had it taped down. So now we have the reverse canvas. Now this would have been perfect. I love that. But what's upsetting me is the fact that it's covering up too much of the XO. So we're going to get staple happy because I almost forgot to do that. Staple in the back of the canvas after we glued it. Use the, the world's smallest little mini hammer to make sure those are all great. And since I was covering up too much, I decided to do the same thing. I cut the frame out of our canvas and I'm going to cut this little canvas down. So this is why the five by seven doesn't matter. And actually in the long run, after I do all this, you're going to see me actually cut the heart out completely off of this canvas and glue it to the wooden little ornament that I used as a tracing, an outline tracer. And we're going to glue that to it. Now, this little five by seven frame is actually very nice wood and the corners of it, the way they're mitered looks very, very nice too. And even though an even bigger plus on that, here's where I'm showing, like trying to figure out, can I just wrap this around like fabric? Can I put it directly on there? But I really wanted the double frame. I, I wanted, I really originally wanted the two frames together with the regular canvas because I liked the, um, the height, the height difference gave it depth. And I wanted it to, I wanted it that way. But again, these XOs were too cute to cover that much of them up. Now with this particular way, that frame, that, that five by seven frame in the middle made it look, you know, a little dimensional. I like that too. So clean up the back of the frame, take off the canvas and the staples. So what we're doing here, after I glued on my little canvas button thingy to the wood heart, we're now going to take our frames and I'm going to try to decide how I want them. Now I like this straight on look, looks super cute. The, on it by itself, you could literally just do this and omit the button heart altogether and just put some, some rope around the edges or staple it to the back for a hanger. But with this right here, I decided I needed to not omit it. I, it was too cute to leave it out. So as you see here, I cut around the edges. So it just looks like a little heart. You could literally just paint the wood heart red and glue everything to it. Now this step, I'm going to take Debbie's DIY wax. And so white wax, it's a very nice wax, by the way, if you've been here, you'll know, I love this stuff. It is 
very buttery and smooth. And I'm going to cover all my buttons and then I'm gonna use paper towel and wipe most of it off. So we want the white wax to get in all the little nooks and crannies and crevices and buttonholes and give it a nice little, I'm not sure, it's not aged because it's a white wax. It's just gonna give it that, that frosty, dusty farmhouse look that I'm looking for. And what I'm also gonna do on top of this is, and I go across this a couple more times, I'm going to white wax the wood. A lot of times I know there's specific woods that you can white wax and it'll pick up the grain very well but I wanted to try to do this on this cheap dollar store wood. I got the desired effect. For what it is, I think it turned out gorgeous. She's super pretty. And I'll show you in a second, I'll give you a nice little close up. The frames look very nice. You see the color difference already. They're not a yellowy wood, but check out the grain on that little five by seven one. Do you see how the wax gets inside all the little grooves? Even those frames, if when you're seeing it up close, it makes an impact. Sometimes on the pictures here in the video and the, and the recording, you're not able to see it very well, but in person, it's so cute. It turns out so much cuter than I thought it would. Now I got my pink uh, grow grain ribbon back out. Actually, it was still out from the previous, or, but we, it was out from the previous project, but we don't got to talk about that. So now I decided I want to put this crooked. I needed it at a diagonal, or diagonal, but I like to say diagonal, and I just wanted it to be. A little crazy a little off a little off centered and weird and wonky sort of like me <laughs> so i'm now picking the placement of the heart and also putting that kind of off to the center play around with placement as you see here you can tell i did many different things and i may have cut a few of them out for for a little any who knows for how long but here's another finger bow this one turned out super cute really right off the bat i only had to I only had to tie that one once so i got lucky on that and now i'm going to use the same pink ribbon on the back of the frame here and are gonna use that as a hanger. Best thing about this is that this ribbon is so thin and flat that should you choose to use this as a shelf setter, the ribbon can hang behind the picture and you won't see it and it won't affect the way that the item sits there. So same thing again, we're going to take our little finger bow, we're gonna glue this to the top corner of our smaller frame on the inside and I'm gonna cut off more little pieces of this white baby's breath and tuck it around the bow and that's all I did for that. I love it, the impact was great, it gave me what I wanted. I was thinking about putting more, maybe tucking some, some greenery behind that heart since there's kind of a raised effect, it's on the frame itself. You could put a piece of star from behind there and add some other stuff here. And last but not least, we're going to put boop, a little heart book button just because I found another one when I was digging through. <laughs> there's a heart, there's some flowers, there's some cute little buttons I stuck in there on purpose, but. This little red button, this little red button heart, I think seals it, makes it so cute. Very festive, very classic Valentine's, I was about to say flavors. <laughs> Do not put any of this in your mouth. Disclaimer, no eating your projects. <laughs> it's not a flavor. All the classic Valentine colors and feels. I love it. And tell me what you think. I think she's so cute. And that stencil turned out so good. Now, I mean, I've had stencil fails and I've showed them here on my channel. If you want to take a few, take a peek at a few of them, you'll have to go back into some of my other videos, but I will show you when I mess them up and I'll show you how I, I fix them. With this one, the essential stencils, I have had no issues with. Also patience and making sure your brush is as dry as possible when you start has been my best, that, that's basically my best advice I can give you if, if you struggle with stencils, but stencils for me, I love them. Tell me what your thoughts are on this. And now, our last project for this video is this cute little heart from Dollar Tree. Now this is a smaller heart. It's not one of the larger ones that hang for the wall hangings, um, but it is um, a Dollar Tree heart. I love the little wood shapes to it. So I'm just taking some uh, white chalk paint because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decoupage some really pretty rice paper. So after the, the, the chalk paint is dry, I'm going to decoupage this beautiful uh, rice paper. I got this from um, Lori at miltonstotter.com. I get a lot of my DIY, IOD, and my rice papers. I believe this is the decoupage queen. I'm not sure, but I'll have this, this particular paper linked in my description below should you choose to get the same one. It's just a beautiful pink, very classic romantic uh, uh, Pick color. Now we're going to use the DIY liquid patina. Also, you can get that there from Lori too if you want to take a look at her website. Again, the link will be in my description below. 
and I'm going to crease the paper on either side because I want the flowers. Now I'm going to get a little bit of this clock on the side too. And you'll see here in the middle, I kind of cut the edges off of that little antique thing. But just remember when you're decoupaging, it's like a collage of cuteness. Even though you're cutting things apart, you're going to end up layering. You're going to end up adding bows and ribbons and things and nothing will be a hundred percent visible. So just remember, unless you don't want to ruin a specific image, I don't think this ruined it because I, I still have my center image and you will see me use that in the future. That's becoming part of my stash. And we're just going to apply this to both sides. So what I do is I put a small amount at the very top of where I'm going to start whatever said project is. That's just to get the paper down and it's basically it's stuck to it. So it won't move around on me now. And then I lift it back up going the opposite direction. And I put the rest of this liquid patina down and I smooth it down with my hands. Then I take my brush and I put liquid patina on top. This is exactly the same as any other decoupage uh, process. So you, if you use uh, glue in a water mixture, if you use Mod Podge, if you use, um, there's, there's many different decoupage mediums. I love the liquid patina because it is a, th a thinner product and it doesn't take as many uh, coats. And then basically I did two coats on the top and I'm letting it dry. I have not sanded it off yet because I want to do some stamping. So I'm going to take my IOD stamps again. Everything IOD you see here is from uh, miltonsdaughter.com. And I'm going to use the kindest regard stamp. And I'm also going to use the IOD ink in the color stone gray. Now this gives a very subtle, subtle look, but you're going to see it in a minute. I'm just going to ink up the entire stamp. And because I have already have experience with the stone gray color, it's a very subtle ink. I'm just stamping over the entire project. And if you see here, I kind of have to show you at an angle for the gray to show up. It's almost a silvery effect, but it's very pretty. It's a very cursive writing. It's just very, I want to keep saying romantic. It's very classic Valentine romantic. So now I'm moving on to my next stamp. It's called La Pen Campaign. This stamp is a beautiful, humongous, turkey chicken rooster thing. I'm not sure I didn't look really closely, but it also has a lot of beautiful florals. And again, anything IOD that I got from uh, Lori's website, I will have linked each one in my description below for you to take a peek at. Now I'm going to use a couple, I'm just going to use one of these roses on here. And what I decided to do was because this is a darker, I'm using a different ink here. I'm using one of my, um, uh, it's Tim Holtz ink, I believe. Um, it's a distressed ink and it's in the color vintage photo. And I don't show you, but I could tell you it's vintage photo. I got that on Amazon. I'm going to stamp my rose in the middle. Now, what I'd forgotten is the heart itself has a wood grain pattern in the wood. So the stamp itself kind of looks a little spot splotchy, but that's the actual texture in the heart. So that's not the stamps issue or my issue. That's basically me forgetting that the wood, that the heart itself has a wood grain texture to it. So I, but I love how the image turned out. And also we take the painter's tape off so that the brown ink doesn't get on my decoupage paper. And now I'm just going to sand off the edges. It's decoupage medium. Um, the, the liquid patina is completely dry. So this gives you a very hard edge and I'm taking a sanding block or a sander and I'm just going in downward motions away from the project. You don't want to go up or side to side just in case you don't have a seal. But I put so much on the edges, I guarantee you I had a good seal. And I'm doing that on both sides. Now, I need to cover the back because I was a little sloppy, as you can see here. I got some white paint around the edges. And I like my things to look retail shelf good, you know, finished on the back. I want my stuff to look nice and pretty. So as much as I possibly can, I try to make things neat and tidy. So I'm just taking some craft paper. I get that on the, you can get that in the, like the school supply or desk, you know, office supply aisle at Dollar Tree or, but you can also get it anywhere, even at packing companies or shipping. And I just covered the back with double, double sided tape and then uh, did the same kind of sanding thing. And we have a nice little edge on the back. Now I have one of these laser cut out packages, uh, three packages of hearts. I decided to take one of them and paint it with the same white paint we used at the very beginning. And that was just to show you that we're going to use it as a layering effect. But again, I was going to put it behind the bow, ended up putting it in another spot, but I wanted to see you there. Don't forget to, that. I, I almost forgot. Hey, I have this little heart and I painted it. Now I need to poke my holes through. So you saw the front and back. We've got our decoupage medium. We've got our stamps. The ink is a permanent ink. It's an archival ink. It does, it dries quickly. So there's no issue. We did not use DIY paint, so I don't have to seal any of this because the liquid patina is a sealer. So the decoupage paper has been sealed. You don't have to worry about any of that. I'm poking the holes back through. Now I'm going to move on to our bow. So this is a six inch burlap, um, which you can obtain anywhere. I have 50 million and four rolls of it and feet and whatever you want to 
said measurement here, I have a lot. I mean, a lot. So I'm going to cut this down to a thinner amount, but we're going to save the edge that we cut off here because I'm going to use that in the bow. And here I'm trying to decide, do I want it to go straight around? Do I want it to go diagonal? Am I going to make a bow out of it? No. I want it to wrap around the middle. So I just literally pushed it right in the middle. I'm using some glue on one edge to keep it on the edge of that heart. And I'm going to glue it to the back on itself. And now we have our nice little line here. Now this is a uh, silver tool that I got at Paper Mart. I got it so long ago, guys. I really don't know if they have it. But it, should you want to take a peek and try to search for it, go for it. But I just like this color gray. It says silver, but I like this color gray with the pinks and the browns and the naturals. It's very my favorite word for this episode. Romantic. Let's see. It's perfecto. She's so beautiful. And I love the colors that come with me. I mean, I would add some pearls and some diamonds. I mean, if you want to, I could totally go overboard and make this a complete Lisa Frank Trapper Keeper from the 1980s that I had when I went to school. And if you know that reference, please, please comment below that you are with me. <laughs> Lisa Frank Trapper Keepers. All right. That took me back. That took me back. <laughs> now I'm taking the piece that we cut off of our, our six inch burlap, which was the edging. And I'm making a bow with that and some heart ribbon lace that I got at Dollar Tree last year. And here I'm just making the bow. I, I literally just bound it in the middle with another piece that we took off when we frayed the, we frayed the um, burlap. So I'm taking all my remnants to make this bow other than that lace. And now our extra little laser cut heart, I wanted to do something extra with it, but it just wasn't laying properly in the bow. It didn't look right. So I said, you know what? I'm going to turn this into like a little charm that you would see maybe, you know, sometimes you see them, like if you have, if you get a purse and you have like a little keychain looking thing that sits on the, the arm strap of your purse or something like that. So I said, okay, this is going to be our little keychain. This is just going to be a little charm accent. As I'm putting the hanger back in, I realized, oh, Whitney, you only painted one side. <laughs> So for time purposes, I just stuck it on here so I could see how it looks like. But basically after I turned the camera off, I used a white paint marker. It's a white paint pen and I white painted in the back of that. So the back of it is white now and you don't see any of the brown or any of that. Well, none of that will show through. I, I just didn't want to take it off and get the chalk paint and the paintbrush back out. So I used a white paint pen and it did the job 100% A-OK. -okay, so don't worry, no worries on that. And you know, the back is, looking prettier than normal. You can still tell it's handmade, but she's pretty. And I love how this turned out. I kind of had an idea, but I did, but I didn't, but I did. And you can still see some of that little, you see the kindest regards back there, that little letter stamp that we did. It's very subtle, very subtle. So these are things, the only little, little accents you're going to see when you get really close to it. Because remember, we put a bow in the middle. So without covering up 100% of most of the work you do, it depends on your comfort level and your taste. How much do you think you're okay? I don't mind covering up a lot of things because sometimes it's the smaller accents that you see through them is what makes the impact for me and that's what makes it pretty. Your choice, your taste, you tell me what you think of this one. That's it for this video. I had three more little classic pink and reds and happy little, you know, delicious Valentine DIYs I wanted to share with you. I had some more stuff planned, but again, time gets away from you and then, you know, what are you gonna do? So I just wanted to make sure I got these out to show you guys. This is the last video for Valentine's for 2024. We are going to be moving back to our regularly scheduled farmhouse. I have at least a good amount of, I got the next one will be like a kitchen themed farmhouse goodie stuff. I can't wait to share with you, but tell me your thoughts on this. And I want to say thank you so much for being here. You guys have always joined me and you give me the, the, the most wonderful comments and love and you guys are my fuel. And I want to thank you so much for being here. I am currently trying to process through a lot of clutter. So all of my DIYs will be listed on my coffee page for sale. So take a peek at that. There's a link in the description. If you enjoy my videos or you find them informing and you feel the need, you could also drop a donation there should you choose to. Never required, always appreciated. And with all that said, you guys, I love you more than I could possibly say in words. Thank you so much. Many hugs. Happy crafting and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.